Carlo Ancelotti, sacked as Napoli boss, now taking on the Everton job. I could begin this video by congratulating Everton fans for landing a boss whose CV includes virtually every top football club in Europe, but the story isn't that simple. In fact, some fans have been describing the Ancelotti appointment as a mistake. So who's right? Let's analyse. In modern day football, nearly every top coach has their own unique playing philosophy, which remains consistent regardless of the club they're at. Guardiola plays a possession-based style of football with a high press. Klopp implements a fast attacking style, also with a high press. Pochettino somewhere between these two styles. With these managers, players generally have two choices, adapt to the system or leave. Ancelotti, on the other hand, is one of the few top modern coaches to not have a clear footballing philosophy. He doesn't only play a possession-based style or counter-attacking. His teams don't always utilise attacking fullbacks like Robertson or Alexander-Arnold. He doesn't always use a target man up front or nimble forwards. He is an adaptable coach. A great example can be seen in his time at Real Madrid. When Ancelotti arrived at Madrid in 2013, he wanted to play a 4-4-2 system with Ronaldo and Benzema up front. However, Ronaldo objected to this as he wished to play out wide, not centrally. While many modern day coaches would have kicked up a fuss and instructed Ronaldo to either accept his system or move on, Ancelotti was happy to adapt and lined Madrid up in a 4-3-3 formation, giving birth to the BBC strike force of Bale, Benzema and Cristiano. Before anyone comments saying that any coach would be an idiot to tell Ronaldo to adapt or leave, believe me, I agree. But still, just look at Maurizio Sarri happily substituting Ronaldo at Juventus this year, much to the dismay of the legendary forward. In modern day football, the system is more important than the players. For Ancelotti, the players are more important than the system. Don't get me wrong, Ancelotti still creates patterns of play and implements systems, but he prioritises connecting with his players on a human level over this and is willing to adapt his playing style to suit his players. Commonly described by all around him as a genuinely good guy, Ancelotti builds clubs by instilling confidence in players and bringing the best out of them. With this in mind, Ancelotti has a history of taking over very good clubs and giving them the extra little edge to become a truly top club. He isn't generally a man like Klopp or Guardiola who takes over a team and oversees a radical overhaul during a several year stint, implementing his own philosophy of play along the way. Nobody questions whether Ancelotti is a top coach or not. There is no question here. The debate of whether Ancelotti is the right man for the job comes from the following question. Do Everton need a few tweaks and strong signings to achieve their goal, or a radical overhaul? Once we ask this question and realise that Ancelotti isn't a radical overhaul type of manager, we can begin to see why the debate over one of the world's best managers exists in the first place. Still though, a counter-argument can be made that Everton have had Marco Silva implementing his system for 18 months. While not successful this season, Ancelotti has a base to build from and, importantly, could attract the very top talent in the transfer window. In a recent video about how Mikel Arteta could transform Arsenal, I described how I believe he will implement a 4-3-3 system similar to Guardiola. With Everton under Ancelotti, however, this is less clear. As we've discussed, he is a tactically flexible manager who is happy to use many different systems. Instead of guessing wildly at the formation Ancelotti will use, let's look at the players who will be crucial to whatever system he chooses in the short to medium term. In goal, Pickford appears the nailed on choice, in spite of the heart attack he gives Everton fans on a nearly weekly basis. In the centre of defence, Ancelotti will have three main options. Michael Keane, Yerry Mina and Mason Holgate. 
While Holgate has been a popular choice for the past few fixtures, Keane and Mina provided a solid defensive partnership towards the end of last season and could be the main choices again under the Italian coach. In the fullback positions, Luca Digna appears the strongest choice on the left. While he may lack the defensive solidity of some of Europe's top fullbacks, he does excel in the attack. On the right, Ancelotti will choose between the 31-year-old Seamus Coleman or the 27-year-old Gibral Sidibe. As a strong man manager, Ancelotti may look to develop the younger Frenchman's game. Before we move on to Everton's midfield and front line, I'd like to take a quick moment to welcome you to the channel. Here on the 12th man, I discuss all things football, and as a smaller channel, any support you show, whether that is just a single like or a subscription, it truly goes a long way. Thank you for taking the time to listen, now let's get back to the video. In the midfield, Ancelotti could line up 3, 4 or 5 players. Again, there is little point in trying to predict. Arguably the most nailed on place belongs to Andre Gomez, except he is injured for many more months after a broken leg, a truly big miss for Ancelotti. In the defensive midfield positions, the two main options that stand out are the experienced Morgan Schneiderlin and the rather less experienced 21-year-old in Tom Davies. In the central attacking midfield position, Gilfie Sigurdsson has struggled this season with just one Premier League goal. Having scored 13 in the league last season, Sigurdsson is capable of much more. Ancelotti will surely look to build his confidence and get the best out of the Icelandic international. In the wing positions, Ancelotti will choose between the likes of Bernard, Iwobi, Walcott and Richarlison. Richarlison, at just 22 years old, is arguably the most talented of the bunch. Iwobi, a recent £35 million signing, is also talented but likes to play in the same position as Richarlison. Here we have Ancelotti's first dilemma, how to include two players that like to play in the same position and who have both recently been expensive signings for the Everton chairman. Similar to the two managers before him, Ancelotti is likely to move Richarlison further forwards into the striker position to overcome this problem. Theo Walcott could operate on the right once he recovers from his injury, but Ancelotti will likely look for an upgrade in the upcoming two transfer windows. In the forward positions, the main candidates are Moise Keane, the talented but as of yet unsettled 19-year-old, the 22-year-old developing Calvert-Lewin, and the more experienced 28-year-old Cenk Tozen. Ancelotti may look to Tozen for experience in the short term, but is a strong developer of players and will likely look to build up Keane and Calvert-Lewin in the medium term. As mentioned earlier, however, the Italian manager may overlook all three of these options depending on the formation he uses and instead look to Richarlison. In my opinion, this could be a likely option. Ancelotti signing for Everton has raised a few <coughs> eyebrows within football. While Everton have a very impressive history and there is certainly no disrespect intended, some have commented that Ancelotti may be overqualified, having managed virtually all of Europe's top elite teams and won three Champions League titles. Reportedly, one of the key conditions of securing his signature was that the Italian coach would be backed strongly in the transfer market. With this in mind, expect significant incomings in the January and summer transfer windows. In particular, an argument can be made that another centre-half is required after Kurt Zuma returned to Chelsea following his loan. Andre Gomez in the centre of midfield has left a large hole that needs replacing in the short term, and a clinical goalscorer in the centre-forward position would really take the pressure off the defence. I am a football fanatic and a Man United fan, but I am certainly no expert. In order to learn more, I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Many of you will know more than myself, so please let me know in the comments section where you agree with my thoughts and where you disagree. Thank you for watching and remember to check out other videos which are on the screen now.